everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this card shape to show you, which I'm calling a floating pop card. So, if I just move those to one side, you can see there, there's a strip of acetate, but it means that whatever you have on the front looks like it's floating, and it's like that. But the whole thing just folds completely flat and it will fit in a six by six. This card works best on a equal squared format you know so I mean a five by seven and things like that you can you can do it but because it's popping out like that it needs to have equal sides really and um, yeah so a square a square will work best but play around you may find other ways that you like it but I've had this for ages this was one of the very first cards I made with the nature's grace collection which came out way back at the beginning of the year and I'd forgot about them so I'd done that one and then this one and I remember posting just a little picture of this um, guy here which I used my watercolours um, again months and months and months ago so I um, they were in envelopes and I totally forgot about them but this one is brilliant it's such a fun card for the guys We've got that C theme and this was using the free stamp set from a creative stamping magazine when that came out so that'll tell me as well how long I've had it so and then there's one there with happy birthday so that's a simple version so I've got three versions here because they're all different so this one's just plain card stock on the outside and then just your pattern paper on the inside so that's the most basic easiest way all of it's easy to make to be fair this one here is using plain paper but I framed it on the front as well so and then just the pattern paper again in the back and then I've got a little piece of um, hardware there dried flowers again that was all the nature's grace even the puffy stickers the die is a hobby based birdcage die and then this one here is using pattern paper as your base and not plain and then I've put some plain over the back there which is that blue now for your message you will pop it on the back like I've done here this panel so you could stamp again happy birthday there and then write your message but that's what we're going to make. So I've got a congratulations, I've got a Mel birthday card and I've got a normal birthday card. Today I'm going to make a Christmas card. So let me just grab my stuff. Okay, so I wanted the right kind of collection to make this card and it's the Jolly Holidays by First Edition, which I adore. Blah, blah, blah. So again, you don't have to do what I've done, but I fussy cut one of the pages and that's all those pieces there. But I'll show you all that as we get to it. But this is the paper pack, Jolly Holidays, and it is a bumper pack. So, okay, you'll need a piece of 12 by 12, but it doesn't end up being a 6 by 6. It will fit in a 6 by 6 envelope, but this actually becomes a 5 and, what was it, 5 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters, okay? So that's what you need here. So this is a piece of 12 by 5 and 3 quarters, and what you want to do make sure I've got it on my right side, there we go, you are going to score, that one, yeah, you're going to score at two and seven eighths of an inch, five and three quarters, eight and five eighths of an inch, and eleven and a half, okay, and that's all along that long side, that's all you need to do for this card, pop that to one side, so to decorate, now it depends on how you want to do it, if you want to just do this style with plain on the front, all you'll need is your mats and layers for the back, or just a mat, if you just want to have the one mat, so that's just the big piece there, then you'll need a piece that is two and five eighths of an inch by five and a half, and you'd need two pieces, and they will just go, as you can see there, in each of those panels. If you want to layer on top of that, which is what I'm doing here today, then you'll need a piece of two and three eighths of an inch by five and a quarter. So, sorry, two pieces. And they will go on top like so. Okay, and they're going to go on the backs. So one like so, and the other one will be next to it like that. Now you can have one whole piece if you want which is what is in there, this blue piece. But it becomes quite bulky. I mean, if it's a, th if it's a thin pattern paper, then you'd probably be fine. But if it's any kind of cardstock or thicker paper, I wouldn't recommend it because what it will do is it will stop this becoming, it, it wanting to stay in more of a square or, you know, diamond shape. It will kind of drag it out a little bit. Have a play around, see what you've got. But I would say, I think that it's best to do it as two separate pieces like I've got there and you can see the purple card through the middle okay so that's those and then for the front 
again, depends. You may be doing patterned, you know, as your pattern cardstock. Um, this is a piece of five and a half by five and a half, and then I'm going to be layering on top of that with five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Now I'm showing you this one because this one covers all of the the ways to do it. Then, so you know, I've spoken about that one, and if you want to just use pattern paper and then just use the you know plain paper on the back there, but this one I want to show you how to do this front because it's a really nice effect. Okay, so that's all the scoring, so we can get rid of that. I'll talk you through the acetate and all those bits and pieces in a minute. Okay, so we've got these bits first of all, and we've got our layer to go on top. Now I've got two of my circle dies here. Now you want one bigger one and one smaller one. Now the big one is what you want to start with first, and that's actually going to go on the smallest piece of card or paper, so it's going to go on the piece that I'm layering on top. Okay, lie that down so you get it as centered as possible. Now, the size I've got here is from the cut line, it's four inches. Okay, I wouldn't go any bigger than that because you're gonna, you know, not give yourself too much here otherwise. So, with some washi tape, I'm just gonna hold that in place. So, again, just make sure it's about, I'd say, five eighths of an inch you've got gap. And you're going to get this one die cut first of all. Okay, so I've just run that through my machine, and you can use that obviously that circle for something else. And then let's pop that to one side. So that piece now, just show you, is going to go on top like this. So now we want to cut a smaller circle here. Now the easiest way to do it to make sure that you get it perfectly centered is line this up so that you've got a nice border, and then grab a pencil and very lightly just draw ooh, around that circle. To be honest, you're going to cut this away anyway, you're not really going to see it. Then, with your smaller circle, you can pop that in and make sure it's all nice and even and you've got that equal frame all the way around it. Okay, so again, stick that down. And I'm just going to run that through my machine. And again, just take all of that off there. In fact, I'll do that later. And now we can just rub out that pencil mark. Like I said, you're not really going to see the pencil mark anyway, because now when this goes back over the top, you can see you get a lovely, perfect circle in the middle. And I just think it really does make that something a bit more than that. This still looks nice and it's perfect if you're just starting off. You may not have, you know, more dyes and things like that. You may have to use something to, to draw around like a, a saucer or something to make that circle but if you have your nest of dies and I, I really like this way of doing it okay so next that's going to go and be stuck down on here and we need to cut this out as well so okay so now with your cardstock with the tab on your right hand side okay we're going to be working within this square here so imagine that's your halfway fold okay we're going to be working within the first two panels here okay now what we need to create is the circle that's the same size as this white piece here okay so this is my matte layer so the largest of the sorry the smallest of the two circles and you're going to pop that on your card within those two so there's that halfway okay so it's just in the front piece here and then you want to draw again a circle going very lightly like so Again, this will all get rubbed out, and then with your circle die, you just want to sit that on the top there. Okay, so once you've got it where you need it to be, again, I'm going to grab my washi tape. And then, what I would recommend is when you go to die cut this, you just want to go through this front piece here, but just put a piece of copy paper over the top just to protect in case your plate might leave any kind of markings on the front of your card. And then I'm also going to put my plate just up to the die so that all it will cut is just the die and it won't go anywhere else onto the card, like so, and then just reverse it back again. And we haven't burnished our score lines yet so that, you know, we don't weaken them. So let's just pop that to one side. Okay. So again, we've got the tab on the right hand side, that's now been die cut. So next, what's going to happen is we can burnish our score lines. So, 
that one. That one. That one. And basically that's going to stick to the front like so, so you won't see it. So when you look inside, your back's nice and plain. It hasn't got that join because it's on the front, but that's how it's going to look. So what we need to do is the white one is going to stick perfectly over the green. Okay, so yes, you'll just line that up and it should have a nice even frame and then that one is going to go over the top like so. But before we stick it down we need to add some acetate inside. So I've got a sheet here and you want your acetate to be the length I would say of just slightly shorter of your this top piece here. So I'm going to do mine at four and three quarters. Okay, so four and three quarters by, uh, I think it was three quarters of an inch. It's entirely up to you actually, depending on what you might want to put on it. You might have something larger, but I've got mine at three quarters of an inch. Okay, so what we will then do, it's going to stick behind this one and then stick on that so it's all hidden and concealed and then this one will go on top again as well. When sticking down your acetate I would use wet, um, I would use red, sorry I was looking at my wet glue as I was picking up my red tape. I would use red tape, it just seems to work, it sticks the best. So what you want to do, because you probably can't really see my acetate at the minute, so if I just pop a, this is the quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch um, tape and I'm just going to pop a piece on the very ends like so okay you don't want to score this or anything you want it to be just nice and this is crafters companion acetate so it's nice and uh, wobbly and just get it as centered as possible okay so and make sure it lies perfectly flat I'm just going to go over, making sure I get rid of all those air bubbles. I'll just bring it up so you can see what I've done there. Okay. Then we can start popping all of these down. So next I want to stick this one over like so. So I'm going to use some of my wet glue because I want to make sure I get a nice seal right around the circle. So I'm just very carefully just putting a light amount. I don't want to have too much. I just want it to kind of tack there in place like so and then the rest okay plus this gives you wiggle room so focus on the circle you've got to get it lined up with that and the rest will just all fall into place and then again that piece now is going to stick on top like that okay so that's now all stuck down I've got my acetate there then what I would do is if you're using wet glue just start to because while it's still a little bit wet just start to reinforce the score line there because whilst that glue is kind of still setting, it will kind of stay in that place. But you can see now, you just want it to, like so. Okay, make sure you've got a nice point, and that should be curved, because that's what your kind of floaty bit's going to wobble on. All right, pop that to one side, then you've got your mats and layers here. So you just want to stick your layers on top. Okay, and then open it up, and they're going to go on the two inside ones here. So again, with tabs on the right, that comes over like so. So they're going inside here. So one that side and one that side. Okay, and then we can stick down the side here and actually put the card together. I'm going to use my red tape for this one. I'm just going to run a strip closest to the folded score line there. And then you can either just lie it down, I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to do it this way just so I can make sure it's all nicely lined up. And start from the top. Just kind of tack it down and then do the bottom and then the rest then you can just squeeze down. So there we have. So that's the, the more complex way of doing it with all the layers but look how lovely it looks. It's a solid card and it's just got such a nice shape to it and it, it's great because it obviously all folds flat and that person who receives it will know to kind of lift it up and it will just kind of naturally fall into place anyway. So now the fun of decorating it. So I've got all these lovely little pieces that I've fussy cut and I just want to create like a nice little kind of 
cluster that's going to sit on the front so I don't know whether to do I'm going to maybe have some of these crackers together in the corner here obviously whatever you put on you need to make sure it doesn't go over the six or the, the five and three quarter kind of uh, square there because you won't get it in the envelope otherwise um, or whether to have these stockings where's my other one you can have like three stockings kind of floating on the front there and then I've got the jolly holidays that I can have kind of across here so I'm going to have a little play around and then uh, yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, or what I've already started doing there, is you see I've just put three crackers. Oh, I could do no, it doesn't. It's fine. Three crackers together, and then I've put a strip of white to to glue them. Okay, so that that white card stock is just holding them in place, because then I'm going to have that with love at Christmas over the top. So I'm going to pop. I don't need that much foam actually. Just need one in the middle, just to lift it up a little bit and that is then going to go across the three of them and then again you'll need to use your red tape to stick it to that acetate strip so I'm going to pop just some there you don't want to go any um, you don't want that to be any longer than the width of your acetate okay because otherwise when it lies flat it would stick onto the back of your card so just make sure you just put a little bit in there you don't need a lot and you don't want to go right across that way because you don't want it to stick to everything you just want it to tack onto the very kind of the 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 kind of uh what's the word i'm looking for the furthest point the <laughs> the arched bit that bit there that's where you want to stick it so let me just show you so then i'm going to lie it down flat and make sure i've got it as nice and centered as possible and I can see it's not stuck to the back which is good and then and now can you see look look how it pops out it just looks so fun it really does I mean that's how people see it it's got such a lovely look about it I love this card so yeah so just play around because you don't want it to be more on one side than the other and it needs to kind of sit quite evenly which it does then with the other ones here I'm going to pop some foam on the back of this one and I'm going to have uh, December the 25th at the top there that's why it's good to fussy cut things from paper packs like I said if you're working on a budget and you can only just buy a paper pack and I'm not just saying this because I'm on their design team because I use the papers way before I joined the design team but their packs are really good because they have pages where you can cut things out so this has all come from one paper pack you don't need to then think about buying ribbons and sequins and all that lot which is lovely but again you can make this card and many many cards and not have to spend too much money then I'm going to use the hope and joy one and again pop one bit of foam on there and that one's going to go actually I might mm, hang on a minute before I stick it because I think I want to add in yeah I want to add this one here yeah I'm not going to use that one let me just peel that back off because I can reuse that again for another project and I keep all these in a little clear piece of like um, a clear pocket and I keep it with my paper pack so I know that I've got it every time I go to that paper pack I've got something to match it okay so that's how it's looking on the front what I then want to do is I'm going to add some of these I'm going to do what I've done there because I really like that I've got three and three but I'm going to do them at the bottom and then I'm just going to stick on the back on one of the sides here these two strips which are exactly the same sizes as the ones inside there this time I've done a pattern piece on the back which is the same as the front and then just the white piece to write my message you can put it all over it if you want but I'm not going to and I've got a little sticker with my name and everything on so that will go on that side anyway but so there you have it how fun is that look at it it's like it moves I think it's great it's such a fun card and these papers are just so fun anyway and it all folds flat and it will fit like I said in a six by six envelope so that is that one just recap you've got this one here which is really really pretty that's using the nature's grace and it's good for a wedding as well I've got congratulations anniversaries weddings engagements things like that that one there again it's really really fun and lie them all down um, and I just love the way that that guy looks and then that's that simple happy birthday one so there you go, lots of inspiration, hopefully. If you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you get to see more tutorials. Thanks for watching, bye.